hello and good day to you today's video we'll be finishing the sweater that we've been knitting this is the front of the sweater and here is the back of the sweater so what we're going to do today we're going to add them together stitch it up with our sewing machine and put it back onto our knitting machine to knit the neckband and stitch it again the arms and the side with our knitting machine so here i lay the back with the uh, right side facing me or facing up and um, my pins are already yet too so with the right side facing the right side of the front facing the right side of the back there's a neat side facing the neat side and the pole side facing me that's of the front I'm going to now pin one side of the um, shoulder this is where we're going to stitch and with my pins just going to pin it maybe fast a little And then for the other, okay, let me, um, I missed one, one bit. And here it is all pinned out the um, shoulder, back shoulder to the front side of the shoulder of the left side. Let me open it up so that you see. We are going to pin only one side because we need to knit the neck band. But we're going to mark the other part of uh, the back side. So we line the front, the other um, right hand side of the neck band, um, shoulder, sorry, with the back. So that we get, we, we need to know where to, where uh, we'll uh, we pick our stitches from. So I'm going to just put a marking pin to set as a marker for me to know where to pick my stitches um, up to. For, and leave the other part for the shoulders. I'm not going to stitch it all together. Why I'm doing this is because I want to know where I'm going to pick up my stitches too. So I will, I'll now take the camera out and um, the need to our knitting, our sewing machine, for us to continue. sewing machine I chose I chose a stitch that is slightly to the left it's a back stitch stitch five and um, the tension I put it at two because it's going to be a little bit short I don't want long stitches also the top here I just put it at the standard tension you know if you move it on this sewing machine you have plus if you want it tighter and you have minus I'm just going to leave it on this triangle here just zoom it and zoom out so that you see it perfectly all right so that's it let's start sewing I'm not going to sew the top of um, the shoulders of my cardigan uh, sweater A little of my back stitch to move back so that I can tighten the stitches. No matter sewing procedure. All right. I'm not putting much uh, tension and um, seam allowance, so I'm just going to using the edge of the knit or the stitch of of one pole. Same allowance. Tighten the sewing. Okay. So I'll zoom out.
and I'll remove the pins. So here you can see that it's been sewn. Now let's turn the other side. And you can see it. You can see a little of the stitch here. Uh, still showing. But no problem with time. <laughs> can see stitch over it later on to hide that um, stitch from showing. Alright, next let's set up our knitting machine and knit the neckband. I finished sewing the shoulder of our sweater, one part of the shoulder, that's the left side of the shoulder. It's time for us to knit the neckband. Here the instruction says, left front neck that we should pick 29 stitches and the back neck we should pick 26 stitches and knit 6 rows of wealth. So what's going to happen is that I've already pushed 29 needles to work position. On my right and 26 needles to hold a uh, work position on my left if you take a look at your neck band let me place it properly so that you see it you will notice that it has a kind of um, crochet edge so you are going to pick one stitch like so for each needle let me pick one so that you see what I'm doing. I'm going to try and... Uh, you see the edge? It's like crochet edge, okay? All you need to do is just pick one. I'm trying to pick it. Yes, pick one like so and hang it on each needle. Then you pick the other one like so and hang it on each it's kind of blurry. Let me. Okay. Pick one like so and hang it on each needle. Okay. I think that's alright. Okay, that's what you're going to do. So we'll hang this one first on the needle. I should let me tell the camera a little. Please just bear with me. So just hang them like so and after I finish hanging I'll put on the camera so that we continue from that. I don't want this um, last part to be too long since it's going to take too long because you have to make sure you are hanging the right numbers of stitches but just, I'll just hang a few you see them and I'm going to just put off the camera so that we well, please make sure you take the whole stitch, all right? Don't split your stitch. Okay. You can see now that I've finished hanging my stitches. And um, if you, if I tell the camera a little and zoom in, you will see the pin. Remember the pin to show me where my uh, to act as a marker. Let me just tilt it. Please just bear with me. Why are you? Okay. Yeah, you can see the pin now that was acting as a marker. I will remove it now before I knit. And also, I added four needles to the left here. Because I discovered that um, after the 26 stitches, I, I don't know, I just have some extra stitches not having needle to place them on so to accommodate for it and 
that has no problem because it's still going to fit the head of the child since i'm not using button on the shoulders and um, because it's the first one and if you notice all needles are selected and we are going to knit it in the form of a mock rib the uh, mock rib pattern but we are not using one by one needle all needles is being selected let me zoom out so that you see you you see it that all needles has been selected all needles um they are in work position I don't know if you can see so have to take the camera a little bit closer and uh, focus on the needle bed you can see that we're using all the needles and no one has been pushed to uh, no alternate needle has been pushed to a position or non-working position but i'm still going to use the technique of the one by one um mock rib so you're going to use the technique of the mock rib but i'm not pushing any alternate any needle to alternate position so i've set i here i'm going to set my carriage to four because i'm going to pick loops and i don't want it to be tight so if you not if you can see my carriage is set to four let me okay the carriage is set to four. That's just for the first row. After that, I'm going to set it back to 2.5 or 2 to knit. Although, I think I'll just use 2.5 for this one. You can use 2 depending on how tight you want it to be. With my yarn and um, my ravel cord, why I'm using a ravel cord along with my yarn is because I want, since I'm going to pick that roll, I want to know the exact roll that I'm going to pick. And also, on the instruction, it says knit six rows of words, but because you are going to knit it in form of mock rib, since you are picking, we'll be picking loops over. That's why we are using the ravel cord, because the loop is not going to be that visible like in um, the mock rib. But the next band we are going to need um, 12 rows. I've knitted one row with my ravel cord now. Don't know if you can. Let me zoom in so that you can you can see the ravel cord along with the yarn together. So that's the row we are going to pick. The row with the ravel cord and the yarn together. So I'm going to set my carry. I'm going to zoom out and set my carry so that I see the full knitting. I'm going to set my carriage to knit um um uh, carriage the stitch dial on my carriage and then remove the ravel cord. I'm going to set, uh, set my carriage to 2.5 or 2.5. Let me use 2.5. And need 11. rows two stitches dropped so i'm going i'm just going to pick them and hang them back on the needle and i'll lose and i'll lose the, this row that i just knitted and take my row counter back to two to two and i'm going to lose this row that i just knitted because i dropped two stitches at the edge and they've not been knitted so just bear with me while I lose and uh, form my stitch back take my carriage to the other end of the bed and we're going to knit those stitches okay now you know my tension I changed my tension and the tension uh, and the stitch die sorry to 2.5 let me push out this ones and I'll just need until my row counter shows until my row counter shows um, 12 
it is a bit tight here. Just pull it back. You, if you notice, my carriage slipped a little, so that was why it didn't need when I was coming back. So I have changed back to the triangle. Always take a look at your carriage. And also, don't leave your carriage on your needle bed, except you know the direction that you are supposed to move towards. Eleven. Yeah. So fast. Now we're going to pick the loop. I'll just pick about two so that you see what I'm going to do. I'll zoom in. Okay. I think that's all right. If you notice, I'm, the loop I'm picking. The loop I'm picking here is the one with my ravel code under, not the one on top with the ravel code, but the one that's just that's under, that's the first one under. You can see this one on top, I'm not picking that, I'm picking this one under because this is the first knit with the ravel code. So that's why I'm picking it and I'm going to hang it on this coordinating needle. Coordinating needle is this one. So I'm hanging it but leaving the ravel cord because I'll, I'm going to pull the ravel cord out. I'll hang a few, then when I fi I'll put off the camera, then I'll come back when I finish hanging the others. So that we can need the other side and we'll repeat this part this way for the other side of the gamut. Sorry, the other side of the neck band before we sew our arms to uh, the sleeves to the arm of our sweater and complete okay this is going to be here so you see it you're going to pick every let me pick this one so I've just uh, picked a few now you've seen it that I'm picking every stitch that we've knitted to form the loop. I'm going to pick it for the other side and that's how we're going to form our loop for the neck band. We're going to pick the loop to form the neck I've band. I've finished hanging my um, neck band. I'll just go back a little so that you see it. You can see that I've finished hanging them and if we come closer you see that every needle and I'm just going to focus on the needle bed so that you see that each needle has um, two stitches on it. So we're just going to focus on it. You can see, if you notice, each needle has two stitches on it. it means I've finished, I've picked all stitches, all loops for each needle. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out and we're going to cast off. Sometimes some will just need one row and cast off, but I don't want the need to be bulky. Um, I think I should do that because the child needs and you know. Also, you can still cast off like this. You can just knit it. This is preferred to make it less bulky. You just knit it manually. And then you move the, you take it in the second stitch means is three stitches from the, uh, the stitch from the second needle. Don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in and, re and redo it so that you get a real close view of it. Okay. I think this one is perfect. Okay, 
let me do the first one again you can knit one round cast off if you want to but for, uh, I'm just going to do this other uh, one you you knit manually wind the yarn round the first needle and manually knit the uh, both stitches in then we take the yarn from the um, the stitches from the second needle both stitches we transfer them onto the first needle three stitches now on this needle we move both stitches quite tight okay let's see I think um, I have to move them more okay we move the three stitches and move them move them back to the second needle my normal cast on a uh, cast off uh, method you move the first stitch out of work position wind a yarn around the um, the stitches of the second needle we need it manually and we take the inner stitch this uh, stitch from the second needle I move them now to this new one that's now the first needle take all stitch from this first needle move the stitch move the needle back to a position and put all the stitch on the second needle then we manually knit this one we'll continue in this method until we finally cast off our neckband I'm trying to be fast a little so I'm going to put off the camera and when I finish casting off I'm going to knit the other side of the neck band it's the same way for this neck band so I'm not going to I'm not going to do that um, process I'm not going to repeat it just repeat the same uh, method of knitting and casting off picking your loops for the back and front neck band for just the right side of the neck band and um, then the next uh, step we're going to take after that is sewing our garment completely Ready, zoom out for you to see. So I just cast off a few, then I'll put the camera off and come back again to sew the complete garment after knitting the other side of the neckband, which I'm not going to show since it's the same method with this one because i don't want this video to be too long repeating all steps again you can go to aninaogunjobi.com to download the pattern it has um pictures with step-by-step -step instructions so you can download it for your own practice for your use can make as many garments you want to make and sell them but you can sell the pattern I finished knitting the neck band you can see it on the table and uh, later I will use a tapestry needle to stitch the overlap here let me zoom in so that you can see yes we're going to use the tapestry needle to so here and also the inner part of um, the nature because the overlap is going to be on both sides 
All right, you can see my, I still have my ravel cord on this uh, right hand, the right side of my neck band. So I'm just going to pull it out. And because there's no knot in it, it comes out clean. It comes out of the knit, sorry. So let me zoom out a bit. Uh, too much zoom. Okay. I'm just going to tilt the camera. I want to get into an angle. Then, um, you know, the neck band is like a tube in here. You just put in your um, transfer tool and just pull it into place. If you have a tiny ruler, you can put it through. Well, I mostly use my transfer tool for this because I don't have a ruler that goes in through that that's as small as that. All right, so you can see that's already in place now. It's straight, and you can see the front neck band. The sweater. Don't worry. It's just because it's still new. By the time we finish, it's going to fit in properly, and you see all your dots very. They'll be neatly picked. Like the right hand, like the left hand side. When it finish, uh, when it relaxes a little, you will see that everything is gonna be fine. Okay, now it's time for us to um, attach our sleeves to the knitwear. So I'm going to lay straight and um, zoom out a little so that you see the full knit. And you notice this um, joining here. Yeah, we join um, the first join of the um, shoulder. We are going to fold our our sleeve, the uh, top arm of our sleeve, into half, equal half. And I'll place a pin on top here as a marker because this this place is where I'm going to put on the um the the actual joining of um the shoulders. We have the same is of of the shoulders. So which right side facing right side, if you see the right this is the right side and it's facing the right side. I'm going to place it and now attach this, remove that pin and attach it properly. You see, wrong it's on the right side and you see here. So we're going to now fix, we're going to use our pins now to take, um, to start pinning our sleeve in place. Just um, I'm working on one side because I have to sew the other side of the knit, um, the shoulder, before I can attach my sleeve to it. So we have a cut set of uh, five stitches. You have to line it up to properly. And we're going to put it in place with a pin. Hold it in place, sorry, with a pin. All right, we're continuing that process. And uh, when I finish, I'm going to light, lay it up on the table. See what we have done so far before we go to our sewing machine to stitch. So you can see that the cap of the sleeve has been attached. 
properly it fits let's just take a look at the inner part and you see that it's taking shape all right we're going to go to our sewing machine and stitch this one up after that we'll fold it and we'll work it down the side from the welt um from the welt of the sleeve onto the to the armpit of the sleeve then to the welt of the sweater and work one side and repeat same for the other side so i'm just going to take the camera to the need a uh, sewing machine so that we can I've stitch i've already threaded my sewing machine i'm using the upper tension as i used in the brief um at the beginning of the video the upper tension is set to the triangle just a standard um tension and I'm going to take um, the stitch I'm using is stitch 5, which is slightly to the left. It's also a back stitch. I can use stitch 6, but I want it closer to the, um, to the seam. And if you see here, the lower tension, I set it on 2. You can decide any tension you want to use. I'm not using a ballpoint needle. Instead, I'm using... Um, is that a jersey needle or just a standard needle? You can use a jersey needle because I'm layering my the knit is thick. You know I'm using a double knit and um, is the lay is kind of thick when you want to sew such a um, knit wears. It's really 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 thick. So I want a needle that can penetrate without breaking i tried ball point needle and i discovered that it broke that was that's why i use um standard or jc needle or oh, yeah i said jc jeans needle sorry okay i'm gonna take my garment now to my knitting uh, sewing machine and i'm gonna stitch And I'm going to stitch the arm up and also let's start stitching up on my sewing machine and then we'll start stitching. I'm using the seam, a, seam allowance, a very tiny seam allowance. <laughs> they measure it, but um, it's just like um, one row. <laughs> using a row of the knitting as my seam allowance. It's because I don't want my knit yet uh, the seam to be very bulky, you know. It each when it's very bulky. Kind of uncomfortable. Kind of uncomfortable when you have a bulky seam. Yeah, so you try to make your seam allowance not too small that you're going to stitch your garment properly. you line it up
and I'll just go back and pull up my stitch, uh, my sewing oh, stitch. So I'll zoom out so that we see what we have done. All right, I finished. Um, I finished the cap sleeve. You can see that it's, it's properly. I'm just putting my hand there. You can see that um, it has been sewn properly. Cap of the sleeve, and um, let me sew. The, I need to sew the other part of um, the neck. Sorry, the shoulders. I need to sew the other part of the shoulders so that we can sew the um, sleeve for the right hand side. So I did previously, I'm just going to pin it in place. Remember, right knit side facing the knit side and you work on the wrong side. Depend on what you want. Some people use the poor side as um, the right side of the fabric. So you work on your wrong side, uh, the wrong side of your fabric. Whatever part you want as your, whatever side you want as your right side it's up to you so just work on the wrong side where you want your seam to be and you're just going to pin it so that we can so the um, so the neck band sleeves I'm just going to focus the camera Namaste uh, sewing procedure. I love my stitching by back sewing a little. You see, I made a mistake. I didn't line my neck band up properly. I'm just going to zoom out so that you see it, that I made a mistake. So, I'm going to use, um, I call it the bone sewer or steam repair. So I'm going to use this to lose, call it the on or seam repair. One end has brush and the other end has, um, so I'm going to just pat it a little. Look for where my sewing thread is. Please be careful. You have to be careful here. Then you just put it and, um, 
top ones. You have to be very careful. You see, my it didn't line up properly. I want it to line up properly. It has to line up properly. You have to do things right. You don't know who is going to see it, so you want to do everything you want to do right. So when I finish uh, losing it, you just put it in between the stitches like that. Not your knit knitting, but the seam. Let me show you how to do it a little again. So I'm going to put it in between the seam. You will see the stitch here. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, let me look for one that's a bit um, obvious. You can see it, okay. You can see them here. Sewing stitch. You see I got the sewing stitch. Let me see if it's at the sewing stitch on it. Okay, you have to be very, very careful. No, your stitch are tiny and yeah, you don't want to cut your knit here. So I got one here. So you just keep on until you've got um removed it. So I'll just put off the camera and put it on when I finish. Yeah, I finished sewing the um sleeves, the cap of the sleeves, you can see them. Now, I'm going to turn it, I'm just going to, so that I'm going to uh, turn it so that I can now sew the sides. Make sure the welts line properly. You pin them in. I'm not going to sew the side. To the armpit and from the armpit to the um, to the bodies and to the welt of the garment. I'm going to place too much pins because I just want to show you how to pin them then I'll go and sew them. So the world here I'm going to make sure it lines placing the right side together to show. Let me zoom in so that you see what I'm trying to Placing it so that it's, I want to make sure it lines properly. Then I'll pin. Just zoom out so that you see the first the side that I've pinned. You can see that I've pinned the side up to the armpit and the armpit down to the waist. And that's how I'm going to sew it. I've already sewed it. You, after sewing your sleeves, you see. Don't go and stick your sleeves together, you see. There's hope for you to put your hand in there. I'll repeat the same at the other side. You line it up, the well top of the sleeve, you line it up properly and you pin it in place. Because when you pin it in place like this, when you're sewing, since you know that that place is pinned, you know that you can, um, the pattern is going to stay put there. And your neat one shifts or you.
So I'm just going to roughly pin, not putting too much pins. Just to give you an idea what I'm doing. Here's the armpit. The line also line the armpit properly and you pin. So now we're going to go, we finish pinning. I think you can see now that we've pinned the right side and we've pinned the left side and you can see where we stitched to sew the neck band. You see that the neck band is lined properly too. And the sleeves properly fitted. So we're going to sew this other part of the garment, the side of the garment, and then our garment is completed. Not really completed because we need to use our tapestry needle, overlap the neck and stitch it in place and repeat same the front part. And then we done all our um, yarns, that's our illusion. We just use um, like a crochet hook or the tapet to to pull them into the world. A very tiny crochet hook is useful in this purpose. But if you don't have it, you can use the tape string. You do just thread your yarn through it and turn it into your work. All right, let's go to our sewing machine and get sewing. It's time to finish our garment.
just saw him come back to lock my and here it tastes let me zoom out now that our sweater has been completed i'll just move it around so that you see let me go back a little but we still need to do some finish work that we need to done in the neck band um overlay overlay the uh, v of the neck band i'll zoom in so that you see it okay i think this is a perfect one we need to overlay it here and make sure it lies flat flat you see it's still opened we need to stitch it in front and turn it inside and stitch this part onto the same edge of this other part inside so I'll just do the front one first first I'll put in my pin and try and adjust the stitch so that when I put it it don't pull stitch and gather in front I want it to lie flat so let me do that first I'll just um, from inside I'm gonna put my needle in and pull it out Hope it lies. okay now place my needle in properly let me bring it in closer so that you see and just walk all right so i'm just gonna stitch it up in a back stitch be neat you know this is a front you have to be very very neat even when you're doing inside you still have to be very very neat so I'm using a small tape training. Do not the needle that came with the um, LK150 or K360 knitting machine. I'm using a smaller tape string needle. This one, I think you can use it for cross stitch too. It's kind of small, but um, it serves a purpose. So. You can see now it's lying flat. There's no bulky seam here. If you see it, it's getting flat and it's, it's as if it's, wove, it's going inside this other day. It's really overlapping well. So let me do the last one and I'll just continue and uh, finish from the back. I really don't want to. Okay, you see that. So you are going to repeat that method inside. I'm just going to um, turn it inside out. <laughs> okay, same part out. <laughs> Let me zoom out so that you. Or same side out. Let me turn it out so that you. Because we are going to work. On the inside we want to we still have to overlay this part of the V and stitch it up so that it stays in place okay but for since we finish uh, stitching up the front part I'll just give this a knot 
and tight because I'm going to um, hide on my yarn. Now some of you can do this better than me because you are very good hand sewers. All right. Oh, it's not going to be okay by the time I hide them. <laughs> so I'll zoom in so that you see how I'm going to do the inside. It's just the same way I did the other part of the overlap neck. Okay. So here we go. I'm just going to use my needle again to adjust the stitch and put it up well. You know, it's coiling sort of, and I want it to lie flat. You see, my needle is still attached. You can cut it, but I'm just going to put it through and pull it out. I'm not stitching it onto the front. I'm just pulling it through so that it passes inside the welt. You know, the welt is like a tube. If you open it, you know it's like a tube. So I just pull it to come through the tube because I want it at this end. Then I'm just going to stitch it to this um, seam here. To overlap it properly. Hope I'm not covering the camera. I think I have to zoom out a little. So that you see it well. And then just back stitch. And if you notice, I'm not really stretching it. You don't want to stretch your knit. So, just those um, yarns here, yeah? kind of disturbing. To get a place for them. Okay, so um, just do the last one. I'll secure it, then. Um, Secure my sewing. Okay, I didn't know what was. And this last loop here, I'll just pull the needle through. That will give me the knot I want. So I'm putting the needle in twice, like so. See the loop. Some people pull the needle in twice, one, two times, and it's, uh, it prevents it from losing. And that's it. So hiding your stitch, you just put it inside in a welt or the seam. Let's take the seam in here. We just put, just bring the bring it closer. You just pull it inside the seam and you hide it there or inside the welt. Make sure I don't go to the front. It's just in the tube. Pull it out and you see it's hidden. You can go as far as you want and with your scissors you snip. You see how neat it is. But for this one, I'll just use a crochet hook. Let me get the crochet hook. I'll just use a crochet hook. I will have to turn it. I'll put my crochet hook in the tube and just pull the yarn. My crochet hook is already in the tube. You can see the um, 
tip of the crochet hook coming out and I'll just wind the yarn around the, it and pull it into the tube see some bulk here I have to do same for those ones hiding not all can go the same way so you can put some into depend on the direction of the yarn or your knit you can take some turn your knit I think I have to zoom out a little some can go in the other way so pull it through Going to pull it through the knit, trying to rush, which is not nice. So let me do it one after the other. That makes your work neat. <laughs> okay. Take the blue one first. Okay, turn it. Take this blue one and pull it through. Hide it and take the next one. So it's time taking, but um, it's worth it. I made a, um, a dress for someone a long time ago, just about um, not really that long, about um, some months ago. So the person was trying to know where was the front. Uh, that way is the front and the back because the inside that's the inside and the outside of the knit uh, here because the inside was as good as the outside i done it properly if it were from the seam and other things she wouldn't have known she felt the seams were just uh, fancy stitches <laughs> like cables or something she didn't know much about it but well hidden so I'll zoom out to do the others. And here, here's the tricky part. You have to go through the, um, I don't know if I can zoom in so that you see these parts. All right, and I have to be careful. You just have to go in between the edge of the stitch, um, the knit, pull your, wind your yarn around and just pull it through. It gets woven inside. This is why I want to use a crochet hook. You can still use your tapestry needle if you don't have a crochet hook. But you know some of the stitches, they are too short to go through the tapestry needle. That's why I'm using a crochet hook. Because when I cut them, I was planning on using a crochet hook. That's why I cut them that short. So I'm just going to wind them in and out still at the same edge and just pull them through then any popping head i'll snip it off with my scissors if they don't want to hide all right you see some of this i'll just do this one and um, we'll finish the other one off um, camera so you can see You can see that where I started the big, the beginning of this um, cardigan, where I finished the cardigan, um, the sweater, sorry, the arm, um, you see just the same that's up. You can see hide this one in here. And pull it with a crochet hook. You can hide all of them. And then you see that the seam. It's neat now. So you do same for under the armpit or the other under arm of the sweater. You're just going and out at the same edge and wind your yarn, pull it and hide it. So you see it's neatly done. Woven inside. 
So that's how I'm going to finish all of them. And also for the welt, you see you have, um, let me put on, let me show some other parts, okay. Like this part, you have some where we started knitting the welt. And for this welt, I'm going to done this uh, one here. So you see, this is the seam. I'll just split it. Put a crochet hook. Just weave the crochet hook in and out. Until I get to wind the yarn round the crochet hook and just pull them in. Take this two first. Since I've already worn the crochet hook around the uh, knit, the seam of the knit or the edge of the knit, where yeah. it's easy now for the yarn to just move to just pass through instead of just going through one at a time. So can see it's woven in and out it keeps it tidy uh, because they are different let let me go the other way there's another way of doing it because they are different here and, and if you don't want the person to know I'll just pull that one out okay I left the one that is the same yarn with it in just turn it a little then you put your crochet hook in the welds and try and pick some of the yarn into the tube it stays there when you put it through into the tube it just stays in the tube you see it is not appearing in the front and it's just inside the tube you know it's like a tube here and on the welt it's like a tube so it just stays there so we finally we finished our sweater join me in the next video i want you to see our finished sweater I want you to join me in the next video to knit an airline skirt for a little girl. This skirt is also going to match this our sweater. So I'll be using a patterned wool or a plain wool too. It all depends. We just want it to match our sweater so that if you're giving this sweater to a little girl, then you can, the girl can wear the sweater with either a jean skirt or a skirt, any skirt or with the knitted airline skirt. Have a nice day and remain blessed. Thank you for joining me to knit a sweater. And look forward to you joining me in other videos. Knitting our airline skirt. Beanies. And much more, even a blanket, and practicing different stitches on your LK 150 or K360 knitting machine. You can download the pattern from aninogunjabi.com. And thank you for watching.